The pool is something you'll find in most DAWs, and its main purpose is to provide a central location for managing all files that are included within your song. This includes audio recordings you've done in the song, imported audio files, loops, MIDI files, as well as video files. We can access the pool by clicking on the pool tab here or by pressing F10 on our keyboard. And then as we can see here, our pool is empty because this is a new song. Nothing's been recorded and I haven't brought any files into the song itself. So let's go ahead and start bringing in some audio files so we can take a look at what the features are of the pool and how we can make use of it in our work. And to start, I'm actually just going to press T and add an audio track. Since I'm do using screen capture, my mic isn't actually set up properly for this, but if I press record, then we're going to get kind of a blank recording here and we'll have something to work with in the pool. And then you can see that this is then added uh, within the pool here, even though I didn't record any audio. I'll then come to the loops tab and drag in a loop. I'll come to files and let's bring in an audio file. I'd also like to bring in a MIDI file. And for some reason that's not coming up, so I'm going to come back to the loops and we should be able to find a MIDI file in here somewhere. I'll bring in a music loop that actually has MIDI information contained within it. So we'll just go ahead and move on here. Um, I rarely access the MIDI files, so and then lastly, we're going to import a video file. So I'm going to come up to this explore window that I already had open and then just drag that into our song. And we'll close that out. Now let's come back to our pool. I'll press F10. And one thing that's important to keep in mind is that besides our actual audio recording that we just did or that we do in any of our songs, the files in our pool are simply representations or references of the actual files on our computer. And in order to create actual copies of them to be contained in our songs media folder, we do need to tell Studio One to do this. And we have a couple of different ways how this is done. We can right click within the pool and copy external files. If I click that, then we can see we've got a list of our audio files that we've imported into our song. They're checked here. You can deselect. Um, to choose not to copy any of the external files. I'm just going to press no. Also, if I come to the options menu by clicking control comma and then coming to the locations, you'll see here at the bottom ask to copy external files when saving song is selected. So then in this way, if I control S to save the song, it's going to give us the same dialog box asking us if we'd like to copy those external files to our media folder. I'm going to press no again. And if I right click and choose to show our media folder in the Explorer, then we'll see that the only thing that we have contained here is that track one recording up top there. Now that we have our files represented in the pool, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our sort by options. And at the very top here, we have flat, which is going to display all of the files in alphabetical order. We then have track, and this is just going to organize them based on which track they are uh, currently used on. Then we have type, which is going to display audio, sound, video, etc. Location, this is going to show the directory, basically, of where our files are from, our record take. So we have track one, we only have one take here. If I were to come in and add another audio track, and then At record another one, then we can see that we have two show up directly beneath number one. And so I'll come back to flat. And then here, all the way to the right, we have a display where we can adjust the data zoom, at least vertically. So if I click and hold, then I can drag this up to adjust the size. And I'll actually leave this at its full height here. And notice here that we have these R's that are on our 
audio recordings. So this is going to help you quickly find any audio recordings that you've done within your song just by taking note of these little icons here. And one other thing that can be helpful to you is that whenever we select an item within the pool, we can always t make use of the information pane down below here for additional information on the file. We can see the sample rate, bit depth, what type of file it is, how long. If I select um, the video file, then we can see the resolution, the frame rate, what type of video file it is. If I select the audio recording, we can preview. So there's just additional information here that's available to you when you're selecting your items within the pool. And let's take a look at some of the management options that are available within the pool, and we can access those by right-clicking. So if I were to right-click on this top one here, we have the option to rename the file. If I go ahead and click on that, we can rename that. We have a checkbox here so that if we'd like to rename the events that we're using in the song, we can choose to have it do that as well. And keep in mind that when we rename the file, it is going to rename that file on our actual computer system. So it's not going to be only in the pool. It will be renaming the actual file itself. Right-clicking again, we have Locate File. And if I choose Locate, then we'll t we're taken to an Explorer window where we have the option to play back and stop, loop, sync, tempo uh, our song. This is going to be... If I choose Locate here, well, I get the Explorer for the video, video file. So it's going to display a little bit differently depending on the type of uh, object that you're clicking on here. Now, we also have a Show and Explorer, and this is similar, but we're not going to have the option to uh, preview any of our audio. Next, we have Select on Track. So if I click this, then it, this... Uh, Audio file is going to be highlighted within our song. You can see that it's then highlighted here. We've got that highlighted border. We then have remove from pull. And this, this will not delete the actual file on our system. It will just remove it physically uh, or visually from our pull. So if I, let's say, the second recording that we did here, if I remove from the pool, yes, and then come back and show media folder in Explorer. We can see that the second recording is still there. Now the next op option that we have is delete file permanently and then this will permanently de delete it from your system. Then we have delete attachments here. Some files that we're working with may have a uh, paperclip icon that's going to be to the left of it, which means they have an attachment. And this can include music loops, audio clips with transformed event effects, and audio clips that are edited with Melodyne. So what does all of this mean? If I were to, let's say, take this loop here, I'll come to our events by pressing F7, and let's add analog delay to this event. I'm, I'm going to add it specifically to the event and not the audio, tra audio track. So I'm going to hold down Alt and then drag this analog delay onto there. And it then, I'll F4, bring up the inspector. This event now has uh, that analog delay added to it. And I'm going to render that down, close out our inspector, come back to the pool, and then we can see that paperclip icon noting that there's an attachment to this. This is our processed file. This is our original file. So if I expand out, then we can access our original file. For some reason, there's two here. I'm not sure exactly what I did. Uh, oh, it's just because it's a stereo file. Um, and then we can play this back. So that's our original unprocessed event. Now if I select the uh, event after it's been processed. Then we can hear that analog delay that we added to the event here. 
So I'll go ahead and close that back up. Moving on, we have convert files. And we can use this to actually batch process a group of files or a single file. And if I go ahead and click on that, we can see we can convert to a number of different formats here. We can choose uh, the resolution as well as the sample rate that we'd like to use. We then have refresh. So if we've moved any files around within our media folder or whatever folder that we're pulling our audio files from, we can click refresh to kind of update any changes that we've made. We can locate missing files. If I click this now, we just have an error saying no files are missing. But if you happen to move any files from your media folder or you um, say started your song with an external hard drive that you had connected and then you copied the files to your internal hard drive, you can then use this feature to um, locate the files in their new location on your internal hard drive, for instance. Let's see, uh, next we have remove unused files. So this can help you just clean up the pool and help you to get rid of any clutter that may, may be going on. And if you're not using any files that are within the pool in your song, then just take use or make use of this option to clean things up. Copy external files is next, and we've already taken a look at that. And show media folder in Explorer, uh, we've also taken a look at that. So the media folder is essentially contained within this song folder. So the pool, when we create a new song, I've called this the pool. We have one folder, and within that folder, uh, any audio that we've recorded or files that we choose to copy are going to be contained within this media folder. You can see one up above. This is our pool folder. We've got bounces, cache, history, media, and then the actual file for opening up the song. A few last tips to keep in mind are that we can always, if we've removed an event, so um, I'll delete this audio recording from our arrange view. If we delete anything, we can always still come back in and grab it from the pool and reintroduce that back into our song. And if you ever have a file or a group of files that you'd like to include within your song project but not immediately have in the range view, we can do that as well. And a simple way to do that is just to come to the files and let me get rid of the search. And I will say select this thumb harp, grab and hold that and then just drop that into the pool and now it's available for use especially if I were to right click and copy external files and be sure that we've got that second one here that I brought in highlighted and then everything's going to be contained within one folder that we can then transport around pretty easily and so this is also going to help you with backing up so once we've copied any external files to our media folder and everything's contained there we can then back that folder up to an external hard drive or a uh, flash drive and uh, then we can have that in more than one location in case anything happens to our original file we have a backup that's ready to go and that is working with the pool within Studio One Three.